Hey everybody, this is Doug. Uh, this is my second video of the day. This one's about leads. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see the first video about devices, go check that out. It's got some in interesting information in there. It talks about the different kinds of, of cardiac devices. Uh, but now I'm going to talk about leads, and I have kind of a rat's nest of leads that I've borrowed, again, from a contact at Medtronic. And I'll tell you about the different kinds of leads, how they're implanted, and then also why it's important that we kind of take it easy after an initial implant so that we don't dislodge any of our leads. Um, so I think first I'll talk about um, what leads are made of because they're, they're kind of interesting. Um, leads are typically made of silicone or polyurethane or a combination of both and they're flexible. Uh, when you insert them there's a stylet, a ba basically a metal tube that's inserted inside it which makes it more rigid or they can be inserted with a catheter. So uh, the catheter is you know the, the rigid part and this gets fed down into the heart. And, uh, you know, a bunch of different kinds of leads. There are um, the different kinds of, of um, ways they connect to the heart. So here, let me show you these two. Oh, I've got to find the other one here. There we go. So this is the first one I'll show you. This is a tined lead. It, uh, it's hard to see, I know, but it has these little tiny plastic prongs on the end. Let's see if I can show one here. You can see this little prong right here. I don't know if you're seeing that on the video, I hope so. But it's got four little prongs on it and they're, they're you know, polyurethane or silicone, but they're kind of a plasticky lead and they're flexible, they move. Um, and when this is inserted into the heart wall, the heart wall is not smooth like a hand. It, you know, this couldn't penetrate my hand, but the heart wall is made up of interwoven fibers. And so a, a lead like this can get inserted into the wall, not through the heart, but into the wall of the heart. And those tines then on the other side, when you pull it back, they get caught in those fibers and the heart can continue to beat. And those, that, those prongs, those little, uh, little uh, plastic tongs, the little prongs here, will be strong enough to hold the lead into the heart. That's one, that's a, a tined lead. Um, the other is a screw-in lead. I don't know if you can see this, if you can see that little black tip up here. This is actually a corkscrew and it rotates about two and a half times out. Uh, usually it's inside the lead and when it's implanted in the heart wall it gets pushed into the heart wall and then you turn the other side of the lead uh, at the base and the torque causes the uh, corkscrew to come out from the other end and it screws into the heart. So it's actually screwed into the heart wall and again just like the tine leads it will um, you know it'll uh, the heart will beat and the screw in, the screw, is enough to hold the lead in place. Uh, now, that is usually not enough. Um, it's, it's kind of a tenuous hold on there, which is why they tell us to take it easy for a while after an initial implant, because uh, it wouldn't take a whole lot to pull these leads out. It's a pretty, pretty strong connection, but we want it to be even stronger. The way it gets stronger is that your body doesn't like foreign objects inside of it. So when a lead like this is implanted, your body's gonna attack it and try to destroy it. But it can't destroy polyurethane or silicone or anything like that, or the devices are, are made of titanium, so it definitely can't destroy that. And when it realizes that it can't destroy it, what it will do next is it will encapsulate it. It'll cover it in um, like a, a, a fibrous tissue. Um, some people call it scar tissue which is kind of misleading because you're, you're, you know, scar usually infers some kind of damage was first done, but um, there's, there's not really damage that's done. But it is a, a, a tissue that covers the lead uh, all the way from the heart all the way up to the device, and then it covers the device as well. And that's the way of the body protecting itself from whatever foreign object is inside it right now. And it's most important where it connects to the heart. So right where that connects to the heart, it will form scar tissue all the way down the lead and it will uh, encapsulate the, the point where it contacts the heart. And that's what makes the connection really, really strong. Uh, after that, um, usually six to eight week window, it's gonna be very hard to dislodge a lead. Uh, dislodgements do happen. Hey, it happened to me and the surgery to fix it was not fun at all, but it happens. Uh, and usually the lead dislodgement is not the result of anything that a patient did. I mean, maybe if there was a car accident or you took a really, really hard fall down the stairs, maybe that would 
cause a dislodgement, but there's really no evidence that shows it's anything that the, the patient did. It's just that they happen. Um, one question I ask is if there's a difference in lead dislodgement rates between the tine leads and the screwing leads, and the answer I got back was no, there really isn't. Um, they just happen sometimes, and that's the way it is. Um, another cool thing about these leads, here, let me grab one and show you is that they have this little item on here, and this is called a suturing sleeve. If I hold it close enough and the camera focuses, you can see these three slots, these three ridges in the middle here. Um, so after they feed the, the lead in, oh, I don't know if I explained this, did I explain this? They basically, there's two veins that run uh, on either side of your body and go down into your heart. This is a vein that returns blood to the heart. This is how they get the leads into your heart. Uh, it's low pressure, so there's not a lot of bleeding, but what they basically do is they cut the lead open. They don't cut it you know, in half, they just slit it open, and then they feed this lead in all the way until it gets down into the heart where they need it. And then they implant the lead in the heart, either with a tined lead by kind of pushing it into the fibers or with the screwing lead by screwing it in. They get it where they need it. And then up here, they're able to move this suturing sleeve wherever they want it. They usually put it right where the blood vessel opens, not, not necessarily in the blood vessel, but right where uh, the lead goes into the blood vessel. And then they use sutures to tie this suturing sleeve down to your muscle. And they tie it tight because once you cinch it, uh, it's not gonna move, the lead's not gonna move. It's not gonna damage the lead at all, it's just gonna hold it in place. So now you have a lead in your heart, it's got some slack in it, so you know it's not taut, it's just, it's got some slack in it. And now you've got this suturing sleeve that is sutured down to your muscle, and that prevents the lead from, from moving. And so you can kind of see if you're moving your body around, it's really not going to allow it to move anymore. Um, the other thing is that after you connect this to your device, and I'll show you how that's done, it's got a, this is a, um, a dual chamber pacemaker. You can insert the lead into the header block, and then there's these little screws on this side. They take a little tool and they screw it down and it tightens the lead in there so it won't pop out this way. Uh, but also, most devices have, uh, I don't know if you can see this very well, but right here, there's a hole through the header block. That's a suturing hole. So doctors can, after they uh, insert the device, they can suture the device down to your muscle as well. So now you've got your device sutured down, you've got your lead sutured down, and this is connected to the heart, and then it grows uh, that, that scar tissue on it, and it, it's very secure in your heart. So you can see how uh, you're, you're not going to pull your lead out just by accident. Uh, also, after implant, there's a lot, usually, you know, as you see here, there's a lot of extra um, lead left over. So what they will typically do is they will wrap that around the device, maybe put it under the device, and, uh, and, and close the, the, the pocket over like that. So when you look at your x-ray, you should be able to see lead coiled around your device. You should be able to see the suturing sleeve. And then you'll be able to see the lead going all the way down into your heart and how it's connected into the heart. Um, there are different kinds of leads. This is a pacing lead. Uh, it's very smooth all the way down. Um, let's see, here we have, trying to find my defib lead. Here we go. Here's the, the defibrillator lead. This has a metal coil on it. So this is actually like a, a tightly wound metal coil. And when the uh, device, let's see here, here's an MRI or a uh, um, ICD, and let's say the lead is down here. When this shocks, of course, electricity is attracted to metal, so it will attract to this coil right here, and it will go right through the heart where it needs to go and shock you appropriately. And then this lead is for um, uh, CRT systems. That's the three lead system. This is the, uh, the lead that goes in the coronary sinus. So if you saw the last video, I talked about how um, you can't get a lead into the left ventricle, not inside the left ventricle. So you actually put the lead on the outside of the left ventricle. And that's how this one uh, is implanted. It, it goes in out the coronary sinus. It's fed to the outside of the heart and down one of those blood vessels. And then it's wedged into a, a tiny blood vessel. And it just sits outside, uh, outside the heart. And then it's got these four electrodes that you can um, pace or uh, pace pace off of. Um, so that's really it. Uh, leads are the leads are, are tiny. They're flexible. They don't seem like they can withstand a lot, but they are pretty pretty strong and solid. 
Uh, lead dislodgements do happen, but you should listen to your doctor when they say don't lift anything heavy uh, or don't pull your arm above your head. I will say though that you've got a lead attached to your heart, you've got a suturing sleeve, you've got your device sutured down if your doctor does suture that down, not all of them do. But if you have that, you have three points of connection. If you happen to put your arm above your head, you wake up that way, chances are that you didn't pull anything out. Um, it's your, your connection is a lot stronger than that, but they tell you not to put your arm above your head. They tell you not to lift anything heavy for six to eight weeks, really as a precaution to give your body time to form that scar tissue or that fibrous tissue around the lead and the device, and especially where it, the lead connects to the heart. And that's what makes it super, super strong. So uh, there's a quick description about leads, how they get into your body, and uh, um, you know some more information about that. So hope you found that interesting too. And uh, again, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks.